All right, guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to do somewhat of a comparison video between the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and the Galaxy Z Fold 6, the new guy on the block. So a few different things I wanted to touch on today. I didn't want to do like a speed comparison and all that great stuff that I see a lot of people do. Um, Snapdragon uh, Gen 1 on the Z Fold 4, Snapdragon Gen 3 on the Z Fold 6, and they perform similarly. I haven't really seen many advantages as far as performance. Um, but build quality is definitely something that stands out. As you guys can see here, we've got a similar camera layout, but in my opinion, the Z Fold 6 looks a lot better um, with the thicker rings around the camera modules there. Uh, the textured back, this is the um, exclusive version from Samsung um, versus this regular uh, black version here that you I believe you could have gotten this one anywhere um, but this one is exclusive to ordering from Samsung's website hopefully they bring that to other stores like Best Buy or something for those looking for it but really the major difference is the reduction in the hinge and they made the hinge better on the Z Fold 6 so for durability purposes I really feel like the Z Fold 6 is going to be um the best fold to last, built to last, I guess I would say. It's been very uh, polished over the years, and this is the final chapter, I'm hoping, of this form factor, and then hopefully they bring us something new to the table, something pretty exciting. Now, aside from that, a couple things to take into consideration as I have out here on display are the different accessories. So this is like the standard kind of case that you get if you are a fan of the S Pen. This is what you get with the um, Z Fold 6. So if you got it at launch, you probably got a, a you know a decent deal on the S Pen with the case. Some money's off, but typically they try to charge you an additional like 80 bucks. And I never really use this front piece because. If you want to do things like game with it, unless you have, you know, a specific controller, you really have to take the case off to fit it in something like, say, the backbone that I have there in the background. Um, so I never you really use the front piece because with that adhesive, I know that putting that on, taking it off, eventually it'll just wear away and you'll have to get some new adhesive and whatnot. It's just a hassle. But that's what that looks like. I love that this little hump here is almost flush, right? So we don't get where we can put this inside the phone just yet, but I think this is pretty close to having it where you can kind of have the S Pen tag along with you and you're not um, too concerned about it. It's got the little release mechanism here. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it is what it is. So nice and slim for that S Pen. Now, for the Fold 4, and I wanna say the Fold 3 even had something similar, what you kinda of get is, you get the same face plate, the front plate, but at least, and I say at least, at least you got both options with the older case, where is a removable piece here, um, but, it has the kickstand, so when the phone, when this is on the back of the phone, you can kind of prop it up and have different viewing angle there to watch your movies and, and content and whatnot. So that definitely comes in handy. And then what you can do is kind of just pop out the one piece and kind of slide this thing in. It's hard to do it behind the camera. But then you have your S Pen, and to me, this is a little easier to get the S Pen in and out but the downside is that it's so bulky. Um, but at least the ease of use of pulling out the S Pen, and it's a little thicker too. So it makes it, for me, having bigger hands, a little easier to use when the S Pen had some width to it. And actually, it's a little taller than the Slim Pen as well. The button's bigger, easier to find. 
So to me, this one, they really wanted you to use the S Pen and give you easy access to it. But those are the, the accessories. So I really wish Samsung would have came out with at least something similar where I could swap out, you know, this slim pen and have like the little kickstand feature. But they want you to buy, you know, an additional case to do that. So it is what it is. Now, getting back to these two wonderful devices, and they are really good devices. What I have found since owning both of them, the Z Fold 6 and the Z Fold 4, battery life is similar. And what I'll say is with 4,400 milliamp battery in both of them, this one, the battery is better because it's a newer device, but I've been paying close attention to it after using for the last several days. And the overnight drainage of the battery is starting <laughs> to even out. When I first left it overnight without charging it up, it maybe dropped six or 7%, which I thought was great because the Z, my Z Fold 4, I noticed overnight battery drainage, and we're talking you know, if I stop messing with the phone around maybe 11 p.m. and then pick it back up at around 7, 7.30ish, um, my Z Fold 4 used to drop 11%. And it still consistently drops around 11% when I leave it off the charger overnight. This one I saw, it started to creep up. It was at like 9% from last night. So I don't see a huge improvement there. Uh, while I'm using the device, it does tend to sip the battery a little better, especially watching videos and whatnot. But again, it could be because this one's newer and this is an older device now. And as you can see here, right before I started this video, I had them both charged up to 100%. I only, um, you know, just recently took these off the charger and this one has already dropped down to 98. Now, when you're using the outer display, as we can see here, the or hopefully you can see the difference there. The Z Fold 6 is a little bit wider and a little bit shorter. So is that enough of a difference to get you to upgrade? I don't know. You guys will have to answer that for yourselves. But like I said, the performance is pretty similar. When you open them up, so let's get both of these guys opened up here. And we just look at the screens themselves. And these are both set at the vivid um, option for the screens. If you look closely, at least to me, I feel like my Z Fold 4 pops more as far as the colors. This kind of reminds me of just the natural mode, but it is in vivid mode. And this one kind of is just, it, it is vivid to me. So, and just to prove it to you guys, I'm gonna go into the settings here. We can go into display. Oh, I probably passed it. Here we have display and screen mode is set to vivid. And it's about halfway with the brightness. I don't have the eye comfort shield on right now. And we can do the same over here. So we can go into the settings. And we can go to display. And it's about halfway through. And there you see it's at vivid and the eye comfort shield is off. And while I'm in here, I guess I'll point out the, the menu is pretty similar as well. The layout. The only difference right now is that you'll find that on the Z Fold 6, you get your AI uh, menu. Let's see where it is here. So you get Galaxy AI right underneath your connected devices. Um, and you don't have that option here yet. I'm really hoping and, and I'm thinking that they are gonna give the AI features to at least the Z Fold 4, <laughs> being a little selfish there, uh, because I do like those features. They are fun to use, and like I said in another video, they don't have to be a gimmick if you can actually utilize them. So you can find different ways to utilize them. You get your um, task bar at the bottom on both, so you're not really um, gaining anything new there. 
So really those new features are the AI features. Now the feel of the device is definitely different and my opinion is that the Z Fold 6 feels better in the hand. It is a lot thinner. I like the boxier design. Well, it's not a lot thinner, but it is thinner. It's definitely lighter. So you will feel that difference if you're comparing the two devices. Is it enough to get you to get rid of your Fold 4 and jump on the Z Fold 6? Eh? I don't know. And that's kind of where I am. I'm in that dilemma right now. Uh, gaming on the devices is very similar. No huge advantage there. Battery life, not a huge advantage there. The screen reproduction, like I said, not a huge advantage there because I feel like the colors really prop on the four. So really it boils down to the feel of the device and the AI features. Well, let's just say, for example, you will get the AI features on your Z Fold. We even go back to the Z Fold 3. What if you do get those AI features? Then what? What is going to make you upgrade to this guy? Aside from having the latest and greatest. Oh, you get your software promises. I believe this thing will get um, software updates for another year or two at least. So should you hold out for maybe the Z Fold 7? I don't know. Or this Ultra the Z Fold Ultra that keeps getting teased. I think I'd be pretty pissed if we do get a Z Fold Ultra that has all the things that I've wanted. <laughs> if we get that like at the end of the year or something, I think I'll be pissed for keeping this Z Fold 6 if that does happen. So hopefully Samsung wouldn't do that to us, but hey, you never know. It's, it's really about the money. But yeah, that's kind of a comparison I have right now. Um, speakers. Actually, let's let's do a little sound test. We'll start with the Z Fold 4. Dolby Atmos is on. Let's see if you guys can kind of hear. I'll crank it all the way up. Stop it there. I don't want to make the video too long, but just to give you guys a taste of the speakers and maybe you can uh, pick up on a difference. We'll see here. Let's start this one over to be fair. Crank this one all the way up. All right, so you guys can be the judge there. From what I've heard using the two devices, I want to say that this one, uh, the Z Fold 6, sounds more full when you're watching content, but the 4 is not a slouch. So some really decent speakers, and that could be the huge difference between you know having a, a Samsung folding device versus something like a OnePlus or the Pixel or any of the other Chinese foldables, from watching others' videos, it seems as if Samsung's speaker setup is better. And to me, that that's huge because these are supposed to be tablets. And I really feel like that's what Samsung intended these to be, were kind of like tablet replacements and a phone replacement. You get them both, you get a, a, a two-in-one device, and you need good speakers for that. So, sound pretty similar. Again, is it enough to upgrade? It's really up to you guys.
Hit me up in the comments. Let me know. But until the next one. And this is coming up next. I'm just waiting on its competition to arrive. Peace.